Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. As you can see, I'm going all natural. My hair, my color's growing out. And the front of my hair is all about that that short all over. So I gelled it down. But anyway, let's get on past that and deal with the word. Uh, I feel like the uh, Lord wants to deal with the struggles that some of you are dealing with, the war. It's like a constant war. And you're wondering, Lord, when am I going to get the victory? Because you're not taking it casually. You're not taking it in stride. You really are fighting. And God wants you to know. He knows that you're really, really trying. Listen to this. This is Romans chapter 7, starting at verse 22 to 25, then Romans 8, 1 through 8. I want you to hear how you're not the only one. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from the body of this death i thank god through jesus christ our lord so then with the mind i myself saw serve the law of god but with the flesh, the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I said after for a reason. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Let me stop there for a minute. Because I want you to hear. Have you ever seen a, I'm trying to think of how to make an example. Yeah, have you ever seen a dog chase after a ball or chase after a, a bone? You throw that baby and that, that dog, pew, they're gone. And, oh, 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 this is my bone, this is my bone. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's a form of going after something in hot pursuit. When God knows that you are in hot pursuit of the things of God, he's merciful when you stumble over your own two feet. I just want you to hear that. Because some claim to be born again Christians, but they live in hot pursuit after the flesh, the things of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the lusts of the flesh, the sins of the flesh, because they really enjoy that more than the ways of God. So they're after the flesh. They're not after the things of God. God knows that. All right. Now, back to the word. That was a little bit of Pat's two cents. All right. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. Pat's two cents again. What you're after, the thing that you're salivating over, oh, got to have it, got to have it, got to have it. Your, your mind is consumed with it. Some of you women, you get a, a, a hooked up with a guy and all day long, is he going to call me? Oh, he didn't. He called me two hours ago. Is he going to call me again? Are we going out tonight? You're supposed to be there doing your job, but your mind is on him. Same with you men. You men might have a little rendezvous going on later on that night, and you're working. But all you can see is that hot, that hot sexy shape, that beautiful hair, those beautiful, alluring eyes. 
and alluring other stuff too. And your mind is on that. And you're making mistakes because your mind is there, not where you are. So even though you may claim, this is for everybody, even though you may claim to be in Christ, if your mind is on the things of the flesh and consumed with the things of the flesh, oh, you it's prayer time. Especially if you are mindful enough not to allow yourself to fall unnecessarily. Some some lessons in life, that's part of the lesson. But I'm telling you, it is not to be a form of practice, a style of life, a new, a new leaf on life. No. You're either going to do what's right, and you're going to do it with all your might, like that dog chasing after that bone. I'm going to get this victory if it kills me. Attitude. How bad do you want it? All right. Let me get back to the word. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God just a given Pat's two cents it's just a given so when you see that you are bothered this is a real good uh, temperature gauge whether you're hot lukewarm or cold if you're hot, in hot pursuit for the things of God, in hot pursuit for a relationship, intimacy with Him, hot pursuit for His will in your life, hot pursuit to please Him and feel His smile on you, hot pursuit to get revelation, all of that, hot pursuit for holiness, guess what? <laughs> you're going to get it. It may take time, but you're going to get it. Because everything in you is driven, is focused on that. Basically, you know how they used to say you are what you eat? Yeah, you also, you are what you focus on. Sad but true. Uh, when you are in a situation... Where you know it's going to lead in the wrong direction. You know it, you smell it, you feel it, you sense it. Kind of want it, but you want God so much more. You will be willing to risk never seeing that person again. If it means God will smile on you for doing so. Excuse me. If it means... You will not only get the victory, but keep the victory. There's a reward. I don't know how to say it, but you know how it said life and peace? When God is happy with you, when he's pleased, when he sees you digging your nails into the dirt to obey him, there will be moments in time in your life where you will, you will fight and obey till it hurts and then all of a sudden you feel God smile you feel this life igniting in you this exhilaration he gives you a shot in the arm so to speak and it is such a beautiful experience to feel God being pleased with your efforts to obey see another scripture in the Bible says make no provisions for the flesh you know to, to fulfill the lust of the flesh and all that yeah make no provisions because when you do that changes your focus when you change your focus if I'm supposed to be headed down the street 
but I'm looking at you. And I'm not supposed to be looking at you because you're a distraction and you will lead me into sin or I will follow you into sin, doesn't matter how it happens, or we'll go arm in arm into sin. I've lost my focus. And if I'm looking at you and I'm still going that way, what's going to happen? I'm going to veer towards you. I'm not going to get where I'm going. You end up forfeiting some of your rights, some of the rights to the, the great inheritance that's before you. The more you compromise, the more you chip away at all that God has for you. Now, you could chip away so much that you just make up your mind. I'd rather have this than God. Sorry, Charlie. This is too hot to pass up. But see, Charlie doesn't have to understand, even though he does. He knows that sin lieth at the door. And you have bowed and made your choice. And your choice was not God, who you call Charlie. Okay, I'm just making an example. So you get what I'm saying. I always try to bring it down to reality so you can get what I'm talking about because sometimes we get so religious with this walk with the Lord and we paint such a religious picture of God and such a pious image of him and we don't get the fact that God is more down to earth than we are. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Okay, enough of that lecture. I don't want you to be rolling your eyes at me in a minute. So anyway, uh, yeah, and I can't tell you you're grounded because I ain't your mama. But anyway, uh, think about where you are. Go to God and ask him. If you're having too much of a struggle, there are some things I'm going to share on the next video that you can do. Because some of your struggles are not because you're bent on sin. Some of your struggles may be because of emotional scars and voids and empty holes in your soul that other people were supposed to fill and they did not because they didn't live up to their responsibility to you as a parent. All right. I shall return. You sit tight. That's an order. <laughs>